Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another episode of How Did You Show? Today, we are recording an episode number 19, and I'm bringing you another fantastic and very inspiring guest. She is an owner of multiple businesses, mother of two, animal lover, and she was a nurse for NHS for over 20 years, combining the passion for, for helping people and having the nursing brain and combining the passion for properties. She started a very interesting and fascinating business, which we're going to be talking about today in. So let me introduce just you a good friend of mine Lisa Brown hi Lisa hello thank you for having me it's great to be here Lenka thank you so much for coming on the show I was we tried we tried to make make this episode for so long so I'm so glad that we finally made it absolutely it's brilliant. <laughs> very exciting to have you as I said that you are a very very inspiring person and you what, what the, your, the business your main business which is the gateway it's something what everybody should know about you helping lots of people by doing it so I can't wait for you to share with all the listeners about what it is so but let's start for those who don't know you if you can tell, tell us a little bit more about who is Lisa please okay so um I suppose I wear many many different hats like we all do we're kind of there's, there's lots of different Lisas and lots of people know me <laughs> for different things so as you said I'm, I'm a mum and a wife and a daughter and a sister and all of those kind of roles and I've got you know I've got two teenage lads which is you know it's challenges in itself um and but I, um, the lockdown <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but I, my background's in nursing. I um, was an NHS nurse for over 20 years. I worked my way up to kind of like senior sister roles in the emergency department and then did some community nursing. And then um, when we moved to Devon, I kind of had a bit of a reassessment and a bit of a, oh, what am I going to do? Found it quite hard to get a senior nursing role part time it after I'd moved whereas I'd always been able to get quite senior uh, roles part time to fit around the children. Um, so I kind of had a bit of a, a rethink and I thought because of where we live as we were just saying like how beautiful it is down here in South Devon you know so I thought what I'll do is I'll set up a holiday let actually that's what I'll do in, in the village that I live in makes and, sense no in a holiday, <laughs> holiday destination <laughs> yeah but when I looked at the, um, the figures actually on it and this was before I knew anything about property I just was kind of actually there's a lot if I was to buy them and then I've got all the bills going out and the uncertainty if it's going to be filled you know so all of that kind of worried me a little bit but it kind of got me thinking more and more about property and so I started reading loads around property listening to podcasts sort of educating myself and ended up buying a couple of flats in Torbay that we um that were in a really poor state that we renovated did up um and kind of pulled all our money out to ready to go again without realizing that that was quite a good thing to do <laughs> it was kind of like just from all the stuff I'd learned so yeah so I got into property and that so I kind of yeah, that, that's how I kind of ended up sort of where I'm, I'm going, if that makes sense. So, yeah. yeah, amazing. So you got into property uh, by, by buying two, two flats in, to in Turkey, renovating them. And was that mm -hmm. for, what was the purpose in the end for those flats? That was just private rental and they just private work, you know, they still, yeah, they still work really well, you know, and they're, they're it's a really beautiful um, terrace, row of terrace houses. Uh -huh. um, but this house was in a really poor state. You know, that whole thing of by the worst building on the best road. It was yes. very much that state. It was in a really poor state. Amazing. And, um, and it needed just sorting out and it didn't have planning permission to be the flats that they'd been carved into. And, you know, so I just, I managed to get it for a bit of a steal and I put back in some of the heritage features and, and really oh. loved the, the you know the beauty of doing an old building and I've lived in lots of old buildings and I got kind of just thought oh, this is me I'm going to be doing beautiful old buildings forever this is what I love this yeah. is where I'm going to be going I'm going to be doing heritage fireplaces and corniceing and putting all of this stuff back in um and, and then 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 other things happen that led me to not do such beautiful buildings <laughs> <laughs> and then, but isn't that amazing how you have learned two things at the same time so when you enter the property world it's not only that you learn how to um how to flip properties from ugly duckling to something beautiful but at the same time you became a landlord so you're learning as well how to be a landlord so it's like two in yeah. one you didn't just get a beautiful ready to go property um, and then you just and, and you got agents to for example to find your tenants and all that you went through flipping process and all that to becoming a landlord so you've learned you've learned quite a lot just you know straight away with your first deal so well done <laughs> yeah yeah you do don't you you know you learn all kinds of things that you, you don't you know until you start doing it you actually that's when you encounter the, the 
the problems and the challenges and the yeah and, and you, the things you need to learn at a very steep rate right <laughs> and how long you've been now in the property world if i can ask how long it's been now well not actually that long what three years three four years yeah so really not long at all so you know but then when i look back at all the property stuff i realize i've always done property just uh -huh. in our own properties without realizing it so ever since we brought our first property in 2000 because i'm a bit of an old person these days <laughs> we you know I've, we've always added value and we've just kind of without realizing it we'd actually done our own kind of add value and then be able to afford a bigger property each time and that's kind of how we how we got to where we were with property so without having a clear strategy actually I've always I've always done property and I've always been fascinated by property I've always loved loved yeah. property and looked at the agent window since I was little and yeah oh yeah amazing so then you kind of like the, you you fall in love with it even more and then you decided right I'm going to go full time in the property or um yeah was, was that after your after your these two flats you've done or then what what, what how, how did you how did you got into property full time like what got you into it I, I think it, it was that moving down here not being able to get the nursing work that I wanted to do part time like I said you know I could get senior work full time, but senior nursing work, it, you know, at the level I wanted to be at, you you have to be there and you have to be there every minute of every day. And yeah. because of the age of the children were, I wasn't willing to sacrifice that time. You know, you only get this time once with them. So okay. um, I, I kind of was also not willing to take a, a more junior nursing role because I knew that my experience was more senior and I kind of had that kind of yeah. quandary about what I do so that's what kind of pushed me into try well let me see if I can make some income out of property you know we've got a bit of equity in our house let's see if I can play around with that and see if I can make something work so, so that's where that came. see I said in the beginning that you are very inspiring and we are a few minutes in and you're already inspiring <laughs> amazing yeah definitely that's fantastic so okay so now you tell us like who who is Lisa and how you got into property and and how you started the property but can I ask so the we we uh, you came on the show today to tell us um, a bit more as well about your latest company uh, which you are helping people and as I said in your introduction you you love helping people obviously you've been helping people for 20 years uh, you know by, by, by working for NHS which is we can thank you for that um because you obviously <laughs> that's just just um again that's amazing uh so you've been you love helping people you love a, a property and now you found something how to combine these two passions and now you're doing that so can you tell us a little yeah. bit more about what is supporting living for Skateway? So I suppose, well, if I, shall I start with how I got into it and then I'll talk yes, about yes, it. Would yes, that be please. helpful for you, Lenka? So, yes, please. So I kind of, after I'd done those, those properties, we refinanced them, we had them ready to go again. And then a real chance encounter, I was asked to um, develop a bungalow for a young man with complex learning disabilities. Um, it was one of those really random, th you know, chance things that kind of happened. And I, I had this conversation and I thought, oh, Basically, there was a housing association and that they had a landlord who was ready to purchase this property and their finance had fallen through, but it was all set up and the property looked like it'd be perfect for this person. So they said, Lisa, would you be interested in picking this up? And I was like, yeah, okay. Knew nothing about this at all. Absolutely nothing. So I was like, yeah, seems to make sense. Why not? Sounds interesting. So I kind of got involved in developing this bungalow. Absolutely loved it because it was like, it's this this young man has quite complex learning disabilities so we had to do some quite bespoke bits and tweaks to the the layout of the property and and what we were doing to it to meet his needs so i ended up in kind of care team meetings which i felt very comfortable in with my kind of nursing background and a lot of problem solving okay so this is this behavior is a kind of problem what can we do in this property to make him you know suit him better and make him feel more settled and we developed that bungalow for him and had loads of problems in doing the bungalow. So I encountered lots of problems with financing. Couldn't get the finance I wanted. Finally got some finance on it. Got it massively down value because the valuer didn't understand what we'd done to the property and said we'd, you know, we'd knocked the value off the property. It was at a time when there was a lot of uncertainty around anyway. So the deal, then I'm stuck there with this deal thinking I've got so much of my money tied up in this deal. I know this isn't right. Struggled with insurance. Struggled with just everything to do with the property oh, apart from the every side <laughs> was just oh. like oh and I just and I so what I did was I started trying to reach out to other people saying I can't be the only person developing properties for people with learning disabilities there must be other people around and actually I really struggled to connect with other people I put posts out on social media no one was talking about it at all no one was talking about supported living 
Yet at the same time, the local authority loved what we'd done. The young man moved into the home. He was really settled. He was really happy. His behavior started to improve. You know, it was all the things we wanted. And so other care companies were, were approaching me saying, Lisa, could you do a property for us here? Can you do a property here? We can't get landlords to work with us. And I'm thinking, why can't, why won't you work with them? Because actually you're looking at a property where I now have a tenant for life in that property. That young man will probably outlive me. He will probably be in that property forever. You know, that's my intention is that is his home. So if you're looking to hold property for the long term, you've got a long, solid, guaranteed income. Or it's not guaranteed, you know, it's government backed regular income from the local authority. You have a tenant who's probably not going anywhere. You know, it's all the things you want as a landlord, isn't it, really? And then you've got a housing association who's managing the property for you and you don't have to do any of the management, the day-to-day -day stuff. They take over all, all the management of the property. So you look at all of your landlord headaches and actually they're pretty gone. And, and also, because he's not going anywhere, you know, when you do your figures as a landlord, you, you know, we all know you get churned, don't you? You get tenants come and go, which eats into your profits quickly, you know, pretty quickly. And you don't have that because you're not responsible for any of the void periods. Yeah. Wow. So wow. Like, so why, why, why aren't people, you know, why are landlords not doing it? But equally found it hard. So, so I kind of set, set to get about trying to get people to talk about it, really. Formed a Facebook group, got lots of people talking about it. And then people seemed to be coming. I found, then sort of found this few people who were doing it. Everyone started talking about it more and more. And you could see people being interested in it. And I think one of the things is that, you know, people think landlords are all evil, money grabbing, evil people. But actually, the majority of property investors really want to do something good with their money. They love the idea of making a difference to people's lives. You know, it's, it's really exciting for people to be involved in. So that, out, out of that, really, we formed Supported Living Gateway. I was really lucky to get together with a group, great group of business partners. Wow. And what we've done is we've kind of built this platform so that um, property investors can connect with the care providers and the support providers and the housing associations who are looking to lease property and that's not just for learning disabilities. That's for people with a whole range of support needs. You know, so supported living is tell a us, kind of... Tell us more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lisa, that's just, yeah, that's just that's fantastic. And as you, sorry, I'll let you continue. I just want to say, that is, isn't it just absolutely amazing? What a win-win situation for everybody. And you're not only helping those people with, the, with, um, um, with disabilities, for example, but you're also helping landlords. Like landlords has an easy life and, and it just works so well for everybody. And you're doing such a good thing. And it's just, as you said, it's not that many, even when you, if you said that you had a problem to find people who are doing this or connect with people who are doing it, it's obviously not that common thing. And you would think, why not? Like there's so many people need that help and there's so many landlords can benefit from that as well. It's such a win-win situation for everybody. So yeah, oh, well done. I think the problem is that a lot of landlords are, were, are worried about it. You know, if, the, if it's not set up properly and you haven't got the right leases in place, they're worried they're going to be responsible for some vulnerable tenants. They're worried they're going to be responsible for maybe some of the heavier wear and tear that may happen it's, in properties. It's a lack of education, isn't it? Yeah, Definitely. yeah, exactly. And so that's that's part again with the gateway is just trying to help everyone to understand it, understand how it works, you know, and just bring everyone together to talk about it and and make create more homes for people really because there is a real need for more and more property, you know. So. Fantastic. So that's so that that's 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 just yeah that's just absolutely wonderful. Uh, so you so you had his, so now as I said uh, before. Sorry, I, I accidentally uh, wanted to skip that step. <laughs> so I'm glad you brought that back. That you know that as you said, it's the combination of your uh, of the of the passion for helping people and passion for properties. You found a niche in the market, which is not only that uh, it's the it's it's the uh, how to make money. It's more behind it. And that's exactly how every business should be run, and especially with a property business, because yes, every business is run, you know, to, to, to make income, to make money. That is obviously that ultimate goal. However, if you have just that and as a background, it, you know, it, it, it's, you, you need to have a bigger purpose behind it as well. So, like, what, whatever you're doing is that you are, you're providing homes, a quality homes for someone who genuinely needs it and someone who's struggling to find it these days mm -hmm. as well. So. That's really, really good. So you said that so you found a business partner, so you started a gateway. And yeah. so which part of UK are you working guys in? So we cover the whole of England, Wales and Scotland, supporting wow. the gateway 
so we're just yeah you know so yeah so we've got providers all over the about everything <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's really exciting you know as a business it's so, such an exciting business to be involved in I've been in this morning we've been in like a three four hour business development meeting as a team trying to look at our company structure and what staff we need to bring in you know it's really exciting to be to be involved in it and and have this momentum behind us because so many people are excited about what we're doing and what we're trying to achieve I think it resonates with a lot of people Absolutely, yeah. And as you said, it's 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 when it comes to, for example, landlords, because obviously this this podcast is being listened to, or, 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 landlords listening to that as well. So mm. obviously, you know, more than can, more they can, more they can learn. Obviously, mm. hopefully, hopefully, people will start connect contact connecting with you as well, and not just obviously from here. You're doing your own stuff, but you know what I mean. As a, from, from yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. But um, it's the lack of education, isn't it? So you have started um, also a Facebook group. So you have also a Facebook group where you, where you uh, is a you interview people as well, now within the same industry as well. Yeah, as well, right? so, so that's now, I think when I set the Facebook group up, I started doing Facebook lives and just interviewing people into the group. I've now kind of changed that so that we're, we're now releasing them as podcasts and YouTube videos just because the time commitment to try and do it in the evening around, you know, trying to get everyone there at the same time and do it regularly in a regular slot was, was quite time consuming and difficult for some of the potential guests. So, mm-hmm. so it's now been released as a podcast. And um, so, yeah, we've got the supported living property podcast and the YouTube channel that goes with it. So yeah. amazing. So, and if there's a, if there's a, pe- if there are people who, um, who are thinking like, Oh, I have a property that could maybe work. Or, what sort of things you're looking for? Could you want to tell us a little bit more for those who's yeah. thinking, Oh, maybe I have some, or I have a property or I know someone who has a property. So yeah. What, what sort of uh, properties are you looking for? So on uh, my main role within gateway is bringing on the providers because of my care background, you know, so I can, I spend a lot of time talking to care providers and housing associations. And we have at the moment, I would say every type of property is on my kind of want list, everything mm-hmm. from a one bed flat to a two bed house to a three or four, five, six bed house to um you know two blocks of one bed flats are very popular as well you know so that whole mixture of different types of property bungalows houses flats you know that really varies when you look at the the kind of when you talk about supported living it's a huge umbrella term that covers a whole range of different tenants Mm -hmm. with a whole range of different support needs so you're looking at tenants from maybe people who've got shorter term support needs like they've maybe been by shorter term I mean a few months or a few years so they might need a period of support before they can transition on to take on their own tenancy so you Mm -hmm. might be talking about people who've been street um you know street homeless you might be talking about teenagers leaving the care system you might be talking about um veterans who have had some PTSD or require some support to transition Mm -hmm. And then you've got people with a long, and there's a whole range of other ones. There's people fleeing domestic abuse. There's people from the criminal justice system. You know, there's a whole range of things. Right, yeah. And then you've got people with a longer term support needs who will always need a level of support to be able to live in the community. So maybe people with learning disabilities, autism, complex mental health problems. So people who will always require some level of support to live in their own homes. So you can see you've got that whole range of different needs. Yeah. Therefore, those, yeah, those individuals are all very, very different and they all need different kinds of properties. Yeah. So, so the chances are the kind of properties that you have in your portfolio as a property investor could be suitable for supported living. Right. Fantastic. Yeah. So everybody listening? properties <laughs> 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 don't know anybody. <laughs> <laughs> that's, good. that's great and can i just ask so do you that, do, the, the, do you need um like let's say uh, does everybody need to have a carer living with them as well or do you do you need a caring carer living with in the property as well or how does that work with people who needs uh, help so i'm just thinking about also like things like parking as well you know maybe maybe they're not driving but as a carer needs parking space or things like that like does that yeah, yeah absolutely they're really important things to think about so It really varies. So if someone's got really complex needs, you know, they may have two or three carers 24 hours a day with them to support them. Okay. So if if they've got a higher level of need, then they'll have quite intense levels of support. And then your parking can be a real issue when you've got a high level of support. Of course. But then they'll often be in a larger, they may be in a three or four bed house, which probably would have its own, not always, but probably will have parking. 
and it also depends where it is because if you're talking about a property that's maybe um, in the centre of a town, it may be more important that it's near a bus route because m- maybe the care staff travel by bus or they need bike parking or you know, each each care organisation is structured very differently and the care staff have different requirements. You know, so so it really varies. I think you know, but you're right to think about things like that. There's many different things, but not everybody has 24 hour care. You know, some. Some of people may require just a few hours support a week. You know, so it varies from that extreme of a few hours a week through to 24 hour really intensive support. So sometimes the properties you'll have, um, say we talk about that bungalow that I did, that ended up being a three bed bungalow for one person to live in, but he has a space for his sleeping staff and his care staff. And then he has a small bedroom that's made into a sensory room for him. So, you know, so... The, you know it all depends on the needs of the individuals absolutely yeah but that's as you said it's very interesting because if you don't know about it you would uh, like at least i would you know you, when you say that um supported living you you may be thinking about disabilities as a physical disabilities usually but it's like no there's so much to it mm-hmm. and as you said that you, you sometimes looking for properties which has five bedrooms for example and mm-hmm. i wouldn't even think about that um so it's really really good that you know like yeah. you know you, you you do tell us you, you it's, the, it's the lack of education isn't it yeah really yeah it is and as you said that you have it wasn't even a long time ago when you started and you couldn't find many people who, who are doing it so imagine yeah. even now i believe that there's so many people still don't know much about it so yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's 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 actually being a real hero here <laughs> there's lots of other people talking about it too now i think there's more people you know when you're talking about you know like the houses that you were talking about that that kind of four or five bedroom house that works really well for teenagers leaving the care system you maybe have three individuals and then they have a support staff in a fourth bedroom or a fifth bedroom you know so so that's the kind of and and they just need a really good quality family home really you know that's that's where they would need you're talking about 16 year olds who are moving away from um you know the care that they've been in to to be able to transition to take on their own tenancy and require support while they're learning those sort of independent skills but they don't need from a property point of view really any adaptations to any other good quality property you know? I see I see yeah perfect makes sense um now can you we already I mean we've already mentioned some you know benefits for the landlords but can you like summarize for those landlords who are listening now or for those people who know some landlords what sort of benefits are also for them because we know that obviously you're going to be helping you're helping others as well when you provide a property but what sort of benefits uh from that not from this self like nicely said no, 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 but it's, it's, way, it's, selfish point of view you know what sort of benefits yeah. landlords? <laughs> it's really important that it stacks you know most landlords look at their properties from a business perspective and it makes good business sense to support a living so you're looking when you're looking at rents I think there's a misconception around rents where people think they're going to be getting low rents if they're doing supported living and this is where low supported living is slightly different from general needs social housing so generally you're looking at you would probably expect to get around market rent for your property so starting point is around an average of what you would get as a market rent give or take a bit and it depends on the lease terms we'll come to that in a minute so you you're starting off with that amount but you're you've got an organization that's going to sign a lease on your property for typically two to five years in that period of time we've got some who'll take much longer but average of two to five years for a residential property so in that time say you've got a lease on your property for three years in those three years you're not responsible for any voids. So you know that what that money you're going to get every month, you're going to get every month for the whole three years because that's signed in. Nice, guaranteed and no void. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, so you know already, actually you're ahead, you're getting market rent and you're getting it every month for 36 months. You're ahead generally of most private rentals because you'll probably have at least one tenant change in that time sometimes you get lucky and you have a long-term tenant yeah but very often and if you're looking at hmos then your churn rate is much higher than that isn't it so Mm -hmm. you also then you look at the fact that you um so you're not responsible for void you don't need to be paying letting agents because the organization is managing your property for you so you're knocking off that 10 percent letting agents fee maybe on average you know so then you're ahead. And then also it depends on the lease term. So a lot of the care providers we're working with will say within those three years, they would cover the gas boiler servicing, say they might cover wear and tear on the property and they'll cover some of the damages that may be incurred. So actually you look at that package all together and you've, you've got a lot more in your pocket at the end of the month than you would have as a private rental. Wow. So many benefits. 
so 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 many benefits it's a proper guaranteed rent no voids periods as well it's like it's yeah that's absolutely fantastic in fact it's one of those things i mean there are some challenges to it you know it's really important people come into it with their eyes open it takes longer to get set up you know i was it's about not... to say that yeah but the next yeah. one will be the object oh is it sorry <laughs> no, no 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 that's brilliant i'm just like saying you, re you read my mind so that's brilliant yeah sorry you know and so it's important to be aware you know it does take a bit longer to, time is a bit can be frustrating sometimes you know it takes a bit longer to get set up and get everything in place but you have to look at the bigger picture and the long term you know that you're looking at finance is a challenge you know so there aren't many mortgage products that will accept vulnerable tenants which is what most supported living tenants are classed as vulnerable tenants mm. most when you look at the residential the terms of your residential buy to let mortgages they normally won't let you do anything other than asts and obviously this is more of a corporate letting arrangement so you often have to switch to a, a specialist product, which can be a little bit more expensive Challenge. and can be a little bit more complicated to get. So it just depends on your mm -hmm. personal mortgage situation, what, you know, how mortgageable you are and whether that's a challenge for you. And again, insurance can be slightly more expensive too. So, you know, but even with those two more expensive, you actually still end up far better off generally, you know, but, it, yeah. but it's, you need to be aware of it and be prepared. So if someone has already, so if someone has their own mortgage and their own insurance, do you usually do you have to just call the insurer and say, oh, I'm changing um, what well, the purpose of the property, I mean, the, the purpose of the use of the property and the same thing, just call the insurer is the same thing, isn't it? And just have a chat and maybe your current insurer can help or? Yeah, absolutely. That's your starting point is definitely to have that conversation with your existing mortgage company and your insurance company and see what yeah. they say. And if the mortgage company, you know, a lot of them, some will consider switching less and less, to be honest, I would say, yeah. you know, what through the gateway, the other thing that we've done is we've brought together a whole range of specialists who really understand supported living because of the challenges. Nice. We kind of looked at what needed to be in place to, to make it easier for people yeah. to let their property. So we've got brokers who fully understand supported living. We've got insurers who fully understand it and we'll get, you know, so these guys are working in this space all the time, but I think, you have to be honest with your mortgage company. Yes, you could keep paying your mortgage payments and get a supported living tenant in, but you're in breach of mortgage terms. So mm -hmm. as well as it affecting you personally for business, it can end up affecting the individuals in your property. So it's, it's not something to mess around with. You need to be honest about it. Absolutely. Yes, definitely. And it's better to be honest anyway, in everything all the time. <laughs> so, and it's a for peace of mind, especially when you are talking, uh, when you're playing with people's lives, isn't it? So um, hundred percent. But as you said, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit more challenging probably because as you said it, when you started, it was very, very rare to hear people talking about it as well. So the, when there's, when there's no demand for something, huge demand, there's not that many people going to be working with that with that on that particular on that particular subject because as you yeah. said it's not that it's not that common no. so yeah as you said you know you do found you do find a specialist but it's a bit less of them however more and more people will start talking about it more people will start you do, doing the product you know doing the product doing this sort of business businesses mm -hmm. more and more lenders will be like oh i don't want to be behind let me add this to my products we're already finding that link we're being approached by mortgage companies about how can we make how can we come up with products so you know my big vision in, oh. in being part of this was to make it easier for people and it's so exciting to when you it said it that well done <laughs> <laughs> but it's so exciting to see it happening it's brilliant yeah. That is very, that is absolutely fantastic. And do you have also like any like um, uh, regulations to follow? Is there very, do you have any strict, um, uh, like a, I don't know, size of rooms and things like that? Is that something you have to follow? I think um, generally they're looking for good quality property. So as the landlord, I think that's the thing people get confused that they're going to have to get involved in really high tech adaptations. Mm -hmm. And that story I give about the bungalow is really exceptional. The majority of supported living properties don't require that level of adaptation. So you just need to provide a good quality property that meets the you know um, HMO regulation sizes if it's an HMO that that meets the fire regulation standards that I think when we're looking at one bed flats which a lot of the providers are really keen on they're less keen on the very small studio flats I think they generally want them to be national space standard sizes so maybe buildings that have been carved up in you know sort of 10 20 30 years ago will be when they used to try and squeeze in and you'll end up with these tiny little studio flats yeah. they're less popular with some of the providers however if you're 
there's a big difference between maybe teenagers learning to live independently and someone with a mental health problem who's going to live in this house forever, in this flat forever. So the organisations who are providing the long-term support do want that kind of bigger flat size. But actually, if you're a teenager and this is your first property, you're responsible for these four walls for the first time, actually a 40 metre square flat is quite large to deal with. And actually there are advantages to a small studio to learn how to manage that and cope with it and not feel too daunted by it. So some of the care lever organisations will consider the smaller studios. So I think the simple thing, Lenka, is it's not black and white. There's not one straightforward answer because there's so much variation. But that's really good. That's really good because obviously, um, you know, like you have, like you, you've mentioned HMO, for example. So when you're looking at HMOs only, there's so many things you need to follow and so many room mm. sizes. And then, and then you, you learn one, like, an, like I, when I was learning about HMOs, for example, and the room sizes, then you come to Torbe and you find out that the Torbe has their own, its own rules. And it's like, <laughs> what? So the single, what? I was like, okay. So that all the rooms have to be minimum, minimum eight meters squares it doesn't matter if it's single or, or double and it's like and and there's, there's so many things you need to follow so when you said that when we with, with your business at the moment it's a bit more it's a bit more free because you 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 you, you have different types of clients you have different mm. uh, different types of houses you cut from a little flat to a five six bedroom houses so it's really really good because you really are open to anything really because there's so many different types of people need that help so yeah. that's actually really good mm. yeah so, oh, fantastic. Oh, like, well, that's, as I said, this is, you, you know, it's really, it's really, not, it's really, really good to see that people are out there who are, who, who cares for, who care for those who, who, as you said, you, you know, not that many people they're doing, not, not that long ago. So it's mm. really, really good. And you, and, and you're in the property. So you're combining, as we said, you're combining your passion for property and I can tell how much you're passionate about it. Helping <laughs> people and the passion for property. I can feel it from you, how much passion <laughs> you have for it. And this is very important, you know, for every business, for every business owner, you must have that passion in you. So and I can yeah. tell you do. <laughs> it must be very satisfying as well, isn't it? Yeah, and- it, it's just really, it's at a point where it's really exciting seeing things coming together, seeing, beginning to see tenants moving into properties, seeing the difference we're making to people's lives. That's brilliant. That's, yeah. yeah. But as we know, with a property world, things take, takes time. It's a little slow game. So you have yeah. to be patient as well. <laughs> as well, isn't it? Every property, the property property game is a little slow sometimes. Uh, yeah. But it's, it is satisfying, especially when you have a good purpose behind behind mm. your, your your work so and you do yes. so it's amazing yeah. can you also please tell us how does it actually work with a gateway okay so um it's a membership site for property people so <laughs> you pay to join it it's either 180 pounds for three months or 600 pounds for the year mm-hmm. and included in that membership is the fact you can upload as many properties as you own or control for our pro- mm-hmm. for providers all around the country to see You also get access to an online course that we've written about supported living to help you understand it. You know, other training companies are selling that course, a very similar one that we've written for, you know, 150, 180 pounds, something like that. So you get that as well. You get discounts on our affiliates. So like we said about the mortgage brokers and the insurance products, you know, so you get discounted access to those. Fantastic. And you also, we also do a members webinar every month where we bring in specialists and you get to be part of the Zoom and ask them your questions too. So um, you get access to a whole load of things as part of a membership. That's how it works. Amazing. That's amazing. You said it's £180 per three months. That's right. It's yeah. basically a £60 a month. Yeah. yeah. And can you upload as many properties as you want? Or is that a yeah. minimum? I mean, is that maximum limit or anything? No, no, you can upload as many as long as you either own them or you've got like a lease option or a rent to rent agreement on them, then you can upload them. Amazing. So you can actually have it just on the rent to rent basis as well. So rent to rent yeah. options or owning a property. So yeah, as long as the only thing I'd say when you're looking at um, rent to rents and lease options is you need to make sure we said about that finance being compliant. You need sure. to make sure that whoever owns the property has got compliant finance on it. So if they if it's unencumbered, then obviously that's perfect. And if there is a mortgage on it, you need to make sure that it would fit with supported living. Yeah. Oh, well, th- that thanks so much for introducing us into this world, because I, as, as I'm sure not, not everybody know about it. So now they do. Now the my listeners will do. <laughs> and that's going to be on YouTube. That's going to be on Spotify. Spotify and iTunes so yeah we're spreading the world spreading the world and um, Lisa can I just ask I always ask my guests um, sort of like top three tips from them on on, on from your journey okay 
Yeah, so I think we you touched on it a little bit earlier, really, that property can be really frustrating because everything takes far longer than you think it's going to. And I think you read books and you assume everything's going to happen quickly, and particularly if you're a bit impatient, it's really frustrating. Yeah. So I think being prepared for things to take a long time, and then even longer than you think, even when you think, oh, I'm prepared for it to be longer, it'll be twice as long again. I think <laughs> having, having that, hey. it's, really, it's true though, isn't it? And nothing, you know, it doesn't happen quickly, you know. Very true, yeah. And I think it's just general life stuff, isn't it? About being kind, you know, you get far more out of relationships with people, you know, getting much more rich, rewarding relationships with yeah. people. If you're kind and you just take a bit more time to ask people how they are and engage with them a bit more, you don't need to be brusque and rude to people. You get far more and it doesn't take any more time really. So I think that one, it just makes everyone happier and chills everyone out. Absolutely. And I think just that's, that's small. You know, I think when you're looking at big goals, they can look really daunting, can't they? You know, it looks like these huge, great things, but actually small little actions every day. And that really does quickly add up to big changes. So just being consistent and persistent and just keep doing your small little actions. And actually, you can pretty soon get to that point. You're achieving the big things. Fantastic. Love that. Love your tips very much. So, <laughs> and that, that is especially the second one, be kind. Like, honestly, that's really, really nice. And it's so true. And because property is people's business in general, and especially with something what you're doing as well, um, you're helping those who in the needs as well. So, just being kind and being patient as well, like, it's, it's usually important. So, yeah, that's, I love them. Thank you so much for your tips. And <laughs> um, I also ask, um, every guest of mine uh, when it comes to education because obviously when you are in the property world and when you're a business you we need to keep educating yourself or getting inspired somewhere mm -hmm. and if you do you read books or do you listen to books yeah. you Both. do I, I read and listen to books yeah oh, fantastic what do you prefer or oh, it really depends on what you're doing like i generally prefer reading books but sometimes there's a few books that I've, I've i like listening to them when i'm driving and stuff or you know when i'm which obviously at the moment with everything's less but no we don't um, need to go anywhere <laughs> I know but sometimes there is something about hearing particularly if it's the author reading their own book in their own voice that is actually quite yeah. special as well so I like both yeah Fantastic. I'll ask I'll ask you your your book recommendation I just wanted to say that you know when you said that now when with the lockdown when we don't go anywhere I another day I, I like I used to listen to two books a month minimum and another day I was listening to one of my books which is I was I'm listening the I was listening to Arnold Schwarzenegger which is 23 uh, hours or something like that 23 hours long and and, I, and it's taking me so long to listen to it. And as I'm finishing this book, I realized that I had four credits. And I'm like, four credits, me. Like I used to spend credit and then buy another book. And I'm like, and I'm like, how is that for? And then, oh, I don't drive anywhere. <laughs> I used to listen to go on the long drives and listen to my books. And now like, I don't listen to books anymore. <laughs> so it's like, I got four credits suddenly. I was like, yeah. me? I, I think everyone's feeling that, you know, they just, yeah. yeah. So can I ask you what your what would be your either book or books recommendation? Wait, so my book, am I allowed a non-property, non-business book? Absolutely. I wasn't sure if I was. No, so this book, I don't know if everyone's come across it. It's such a beautiful book. So it's called The Boy, the Mole, the Fox and the Horse. And it's <gasps> just, it's a book for at the moment. And it's a book for any age. And it's very easy to read, but it's just full of beautiful illustrations and life lessons and it's just the most beautiful it's like reading a hug basically it's the most beautiful book um oh, and it, get this what was it yeah. called again the boy the mole the fox and the horse and it's a um it's a book that i think particularly at the moment when we're in lockdown and january and it's all a bit grim i think it's a really inspiring lovely book so Oh, and that's my recommendation for a book but it's not a business book I'm afraid but it is a book that I think we all need in our lives at the moment I love that you know especially like um you, you know what I love that you 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 you're doing the, well, well, the with the supported living it's property and obviously it's a business but you're helping people which means that you need to be kind as you said in your <laughs> and now it's linking to the book recommendation as well it's like reading a hug I love the whole how it's <laughs> linking together I absolutely love it and it's like you know when when um even even when uh, when you are in the business um yeah you do you do need to you know it's important to um get educated or listen to people who who are 
achieving things and, you know, just getting motivated and getting inspired and all that. But at the same time, again, I'm coming back to your tip before because I love it. Just be kind and things like that. Like reading, like that sort of book recommendation, I absolutely love it. And I want to get this book now because as you said, <laughs> just to read something, what makes you feel warmer and happier and yeah. not just necessarily business, business, business. It's, I, I think I think it's very easy when you're kind of in property and business worlds to feel like you should always be reading really highbrow books yeah. that are going to improve you. But I think actually sometimes you can step away from actually just the beauty of a book and the enjoyment of reading a really good novel or, you know, so, but this is, yeah, so I'm I glad you like it. Uh, absolutely <laughs> love it. And do you, and I also, there's another thing I always ask is that, uh, do you like watching um, either TVs or series or documentary or do you like TV or TV series? Yeah, yeah, I do. I look good TV, but I think you, when you'd asked me about what I'd watch, so I'd come up with a YouTube channel that I was going to recommend. So I don't know if that's, oh, that's allowed. I don't know if fantastic. that's allowed. Fantastic. Thing. so this is um i don't know if you're not allowed to do anything you want oh perfect all right <laughs> this is um so it's property sisters uk which is this fabulous group i was really lucky to be invited to join you know that and the, they're a powerhouse of dynamic property developer women in the uk but they set up this youtube channel and it's just got so much great content on it it's all free there's no promoting anything um they lots of them different everyone sort of fed in different bits of you know videos and it's just a really good resource for anyone to go to who's looking f to get into property but also for up-to-date stuff on what's happening now on a whole load of you know for really if you're quite experienced and it's not just for women I, I know it's called property sisters uk but the youtube channel is out there for anyone that's you know and it really is it's a really good resource for free fantastic so. thank you so much i'll definitely have a look at those property yeah. sisters <laughs> <laughs> amazing sounds sounds really good and it's also nice to see as well um nice to it's nice it's good to found a um women getting together in property because it was it used to be very stereotyp stereotypically man's business was an in general business used to be more like man do the business uh, and then property as well but now more and more women coming coming to light as well it's like no i want to do this it is, i was absolute pleasure having you today and um but i really want people to be able to find you uh those who are like oh i want to know more about her oh i need to contact her because i have a property for her so how can people find you where where are you <laughs> okay so i'm on um on instagram i'm lisa brown property on facebook i'm lisa brown and linkedin i'm lisa brown so unfortunately you search for lisa brown and there's thousands of us but if you look for lisa brown property or lisa brown supported living i generally come up uh -huh. supported living gateway is the best way you know to find us so that's just www.supportedlivinggateway.com and that's the best way to find out more about the gateway but the gateway is also on all the social media channels too so supported living gateway is is everywhere for you to follow while do on the, the on the podcast uh, sorry on the YouTube I will pop I'll pop it on the screen so people can actually okay, read it and on the podcast I'll put it in the comments so they can also go down and just I found it there but I'll definitely definitely put it put it out there so thank you so much and Lisa thank that was uh, absolutely absolutely fantastic thank you thank you so 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 much for coming on the show today and for sharing the experience sharing your passion um, and and as I said that, that like you you really really inspired me from the day one I met you um, and you keep shining <laughs> so thank you for everything you do and I'm sure and I'm really wishing you and your business all the best I'm sure you guys are gonna shoot towards the stars <laughs> thank you Lenka it's been lovely to be here thank you yeah.